Attention! Go! So the two, two scholars fight their way down the uh, side of Temple Island. The regatta course, well, at the end of the 19th century, used to be on the other side, but uh, the stewards dug out the channel to make it absolutely straight. Yeah, it's good to see Merck and Abko over there, just looking to her left and to her right, but I think to the left it's worth just checking her distance off the island, because this bit's always the most difficult to steer. It's also the most nerve-wracking. As they come out the top of the island here, you can see Merck and Abkova rowing into that more properly bouncy-looking water. The boat could get blown a little bit sideways. You definitely don't want to be hitting, hitting the wooden booms, um, but you also want to be keeping your boat under control as they get out here, just coming through the top of the island, and Merck and Abkova has made a good start there. So, with uh, just about a minute gone in this women's single skulls final, the Princess Royal Challenge Cup, it's the Olympic champion, Mika Natkova, who leads this race from the Dutch woman, Lisa Schiernard. Natkova will look across to her left and be very pleased with the work in the first few hundred metres. Yeah, and Lisa Schiernard now, she wants to stay in contact. I think she wants to move back to her own station. It looks to me like she's been pulled out, possibly whether she's catching the bow wave or whether that wind's affected her. Um, she wants to get as close to the bank as she possibly can, try and get some shelter, because um, Merck and Atkova will definitely keep moving if she gets the chance. I think that's what we're seeing now with her long, effective stroke, just rocking her body back through the finish of the stroke, and holding the blades buried and make sure she gets the full value for every single stroke. So that is the quarter mile signal on this uh, course, which is one mile, 550 yards there or thereabouts. 2,150 uh, odd metres, if you prefer that distance. And 2,112, I believe it is. Actually. Well, you are a steward, so yeah. you would know that, yeah. Greg. And, but what uh, it is, it is also upstream. So today it's upstream and it's upwind, so it's longer than 2,000 metres. That's the important bit. That's what makes Henley that little bit special, as well as it being this matched racing. Um, and so we all know what it's like to do a 2,000-metre test on a Concept 2. We've all sat down and done it. Uh, Henley, you've just got to do that a little bit more when you're at that point where you really, really want to stop. So Lisa Sheenard on your left there, part-time student at uh, the University of Eindhoven, Masters in Building Engineering. She's a highly qualified woman, as are many of the oarswomen in the national teams. And of course, Lisa has rowed at World Championship level in 2013. She was part of the Dutch women's quad in Chengdu in the championships there in Korea. She's got a silver medal from the European Championships. But Lisa is mainly known for sculling in crew boats, Greg, and this single skulls event is completely different, isn't it? Yeah, I think I had a conversation with her last year. She was actually in the Dutch 8 last year here at Henley, and then she moved into the single skull, finished 12th um, at the World Championships on the Boss Barn uh, in Amsterdam. And uh, she's made the move out into the single. Um, and uh, I'm imagining she won't be uh, enjoying her row today um, up against Mirka Natkova, the Olympic champion, of course, and somebody who really knows this Henley course well, and who loves coming here um, time after time. And uh, we'll be looking to add to her prizes from here today. So we see the scene, the banks absolutely packed perhaps not quite so rammed as they were on saturday which is just horrendous if you come here to try and find a bit of space i know tens hundreds of thousands of people do try and do that but uh, you can see from our drone shot the olympic champion mirka Nakova from the czech republic yeah and we know that world rowing has a tie up with the worldwide fund for nature to look after water and you look at these beautiful shots of the river thames you look at the facilities we're so lucky to be able to enjoy here at Henley, it's been going on since 1839. Um, the course really hasn't changed very much. We're just so lucky this year that we're able to get photographs, moving images like this, to be able to see just what a fantastic event this is. So, uh, in the launch behind, no doubt following the race, will be Thomas Kakowski, Nick Anatkova's coach. And uh, we've said it already at this regatta, but it's worth repeating the Czech Republic have two of the finest single scholars in the world. Natkova, the Olympic champion, and Andrei Sinek, who last year won the world title, beating uh, this morning's winner of the Diamond Skulls, Mahe Drysdale. I wonder how you see that uh, race measuring up in Lucerne in a week's time, Greg. Yeah, well, later on in the year, that's going to be a fantastic one to watch. And we've also now got the Croatian sculler in the mix as well. 
Um, so I think we're going to have a real fight on our hands for the men's single skulls come Lucerne next week and in the World Championships. So Lisa Schoenard, the sculler from the Hollandia Roy Club, she is in the distinctive Dutch colours behind Mirka Napkova. You can see, if you're watching from wherever you are in the world, we have a pretty strong head breeze here. It's the prevailing wind on the Henley Reach. The reach is the part of the river. I'll give that name to part of the river. And there is the Olympic champion that our camera is picking up. And it's nice to see her technique there, that she really slides right the way up. You can see that by looking into the boat. And that makes a good connection and holds the blades long into the headwind, and that's what you really have to do in a headwind. It's got to be that middle part of the stroke, that finished part of the stroke, to keep driving it through these conditions. Greg, I know a lot of people that uh, don't watch rowing, and there's a great shot. They're, they're, they're surprised to see uh, the rowers using their legs, because white band men will just normally do an action with their arms if they're imitating rowing. I mean, just explain how that works. Well, really, the basic principle of the rowing stroke, I guess, is that you put the oar in the water, the painted bit, as close to the finish line as you can, you lock it against the water as efficiently as you can, and then you lever the boat past it. You then try to remove the boat as quietly as you can. At the finish of the stroke, that we see Merck and Napkova doing here, as he removes the boat there, the oars come out there, and then you try to come, let the boat slide underneath you as quietly as possible, as efficiently as possible, and then you connect up as close to the finish line as you can and move it on by using your legs, by rocking over with your body and leaving your arms out nice and straight, you get a longer stroke. And the longer each stroke is, the further you go each stroke. And we always talk about distance per stroke. Then you build in power, then you can take more strokes, and then you build efficiency. And that is rowing, or sculling in this case. Well, it sounds so simple, Greg. And uh, if I ask you, of course, you won a world uh, bronze medal in 1997 in the single skull. How many times did you race in the zone where everything was absolutely right from all those outings you did? Well, that's so interesting. I remember being coached here in the Diamond Skulls, um, which I also competed and also won in 97, being coached by legendary Harry Mann. I'm just seeing something floating in the water there, just on the bow of Merck and Napkova's boat. I'm just going to see her come past it there. Um, just some small bit of debris. Luckily, that hasn't caused any effect on her, on her progress down the course here. And yeah, when do you get it right? Well, I think you get it right when you're loose and you're relaxed, but you're also really focused and determined. And to me, hitting that combination right was something that I was able to do on a few occasions and really able to raise it when it mattered. So we are just uh, 500 metres away from the finish line in the final of the Princess Royal Challenge Cup, the event, open event at Henry Regatta for women's skulls. We're watching Mirka Napkova, the Olympic champion from the Czech Republic, progress in a very focused manner. She's got to go to the World Championships later this year to the third World Cup in Lucerne next week and she will come up against the scorching pace of Australia's Kim Crow. The Olympic silver medalist for Ubi Eriksson is back in the frame. No Emma Twig from New Zealand this year, but uh, Lapkova's got to find her form and that's why this regatta is so important for her. Yeah, we're delighted to have her here at Henley. It's fantastic to have the Olympic champion here, but. As you say, she'll be moving a focus to Lucerne, as so many of the, these international rowers will. They'll be out there next week. And then following Lucerne, they look on to the World Championships and Egg Ballet uh, in August. And that obviously has World Championship medals, but also has the all-important Olympic qualifications at stake. So this is a very big year for the internationals. And uh, they'll want to just make sure they build through the year, use each race to build experience so they get faster and faster towards that big one at the end of the summer. I, and I'm struck watching this race, Greg. It's a very different experience. I'm, my voice is lower. I'm not as up as excited as that uh, H race before. I mean, you do get this very different kind of feel in these number of different events we have at the regatta. Yeah, and it's nice to see that, isn't it? And I think when you when you race in a single, when you win in a single, you won't have the whooping, the cheering, the high fives um, that we saw from the Yale crew. It's a deep satisfaction, though, for the single scholars. And there's also a deep respect that I'm sure Mirka Nabko over here will feel very proud, but I'm sure she'll also know she's come up against a good competitor. Lisa Sheenard here has given it what she can um, to give us this final today. So. The Czech Republic's Mirka Napkova comes up and she takes her fifth win in the Princess Royal Challenge Cup. Hand goes in the air. She knows what that records mean. It will put her into the sports record books, the legends in the sports who have come here, like Sweden's Maria Brandin. And uh, Mahe Drysdale racked up his fifth win earlier on. The Olympic champion Mirka Napkova from the Czech Republic has done just the same.